So Canam presents Canadian universities and colleges conclave Canam webinar series as a part of the Canam webinar series. It was a three-day conclave from 27 to 29th, and this is the ultimate session. So thank you all for being with us. A quick introduction onto who's Canam. We've been pioneers in career counseling for students headed to Canada for the past 25 years. Please listen to the videos on our website to hear what top universities and colleges have to say about Canam counselors and services. Canam has been very special to Canada. Anurad Sandhu, our CEO, is an ICCRC member, Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council, which means that he's a regulated Canadian government licensed consultant for guidance on visa and PR processes. When students are looking for guidance on applying for study permits, they need to, if they need advice, they should be seeking only an authorized immigration consultant for help on their study permits. Also, most of the students who are looking to study in Canada definitely want to be able to get the Canadian work experience after that and are looking at opportunities to apply for permanent residency after that if they qualify for it. So if they're looking for guidance for that, what they do need to do is seek only guidance from licensed immigration consultants because they need to have a lot of information on what are the PR options for them, what are the provincial nominee programs, what are the various provinces offering them, what kind of points do they get if they study a diploma or a master's or a bachelor's. So all of that kind of information should be sought and only sought guidance from a licensed immigration consultant. At Canam, we can claim this rare combination of long and licensed experience of promoting Canadian education, careers, and pathways to permanent residency in Canada. Again, do not seek visa assistance or PR guidance from unlicensed agents. Canam is one of the largest overseas education consulting companies with a network of offices in over 30 locations across India and in Toronto, Canada. We give career advice to over 2 lakh students and professionals each year and process about 75,000 applications for university and college admissions in Canada. Our artificial intelligence driven platform, iApply, has contributed significantly to these numbers this year. Especially being a pandemic year, we are extremely grateful to our partner universities and colleges who have supported us throughout. And we've actually conducted about 90 odd live webinars with question and answer sessions for students, as well as shot for about 150 odd videos. And that has led us to be able to help and reach out to such a large number of students. In fact, this conclave also, we managed to reach out to 10,000 plus students who were pre-registered for our various sessions. So our heartiest congratulations to the students as well as grateful thanks to all the university and college partners and the IRCC officials. Our free services include live interaction with delegates through webinars, visits, uh, road shows, web fairs, and so on. Career counseling, admission services, getting application fee waivers where possible, visa guidance, providing scholarship options wherever possible, and interview preparation where it's needed. So why this conclave? As leaders in promoting Canadian education for two and a half decades, this conclave by Canam is a logical step towards removing myths and clarifying a lot of frequently asked questions that have been confusing students all along for a lack of regulated guidance and licensed consultants in India. We thank all our panelists for taking time out of their zones and sharing this huge responsibility with us in reaching out to students and parents on eight hot topics related to Canadian education. Promoting Canadian education with a global career perspective, focusing on Canadian education and skill development planning for Indian students and working professionals, the topic for this last session, who are authorized agents and how does it benefit students to consult them? Also, important tips on student visas by IRCC officials. And our panelists for today are, and I list them in alphabetical order, Adhirad Singh Gill, International Recruitment Manager, University of Lethbridge, Alberta. Adhiraj has been an international student for over five years while completing a bachelor's degree in New Zealand and a master's degree in Canada. Adhiraj volunteered regularly during his time at university at the International Center, helping other incoming international students get their bearings and develop familiarity with their new home and surroundings. He has lived in three different continents, recruiting students to study in Canada. He recently joined the University of Lethbridge to oversee international recruitment for the university. Thank you for being with us, Adhiraj. 
Thank you for the having me. Panelist number two, Ashley Dunlop, Director, Student Recruitment, University of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Ashley is University of Winnipeg's Director of Recruitment, Admissions, and International Student Services, overseeing a team of dedicated employees engaged with every aspect of the international student experience. She is also a regulated international student immigration advisor, commonly referred to as Rizia. Thank you for being with us today, Ashley. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, panelist number three, Chris Slade, Senior Dean, International Education and Computer Studies, Lambton College, Sarnia, Ontario. Chris Slade began his career at Lambton College in 2008 and is Senior Dean of International Education, responsible for Lambton's three study locations in Sarnia, Mississauga, and Toronto. Chris holds a BA Honours in Business Administration from the Richard Ivey School of Business and a Master of Science from the University of Guelph. He's also a regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant, RCIC, with the ICCRC, Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council. Chris's emphasis on quality of education has contributed to Lambton College's key performance indicator of a 100% satisfaction rate for employers who hire Lambton College graduates. International graduates at Lambton are similarly satisfied. On the most recent survey, 96% of international graduates indicated they would recommend Lambton College. Thank you for being here today, Chris. Our panelist number four, Cindy McLeod, CEO, Global University Systems Canada. Cindy McLeod is an award-winning education executive with over 30 years of leadership experience in both the public and private education sector. Cindy's expertise lies in building strategic business and educational connections that result in growth and expansion in the institution she has been involved with. Cindy's specialization is in internationalization and has led the way for numerous joint ventures between education entities in Canada, Asia, Middle East, Latin America, and Europe. Thank you for being here today, Cindy. A panelist number five, Dylan Silva, Second Secretary Migration, High Commission of Canada, New Delhi, India. Dylan Silva is a Second Secretary Migration since August 2019 at the High Commission of Canada in New Delhi, India. We're happy to have you here with us today, Dylan. Thank you very much, Kanga. Our sixth panelist, Jackie McLean, manager CSCCU, High Commission of Canada, New Delhi, India. Jackie McLean, manager CSCCU, second time posted to Delhi. She has had postings in Beijing and Jamaica mm -hmm. and has worked for IRCC since 1993. Happy to have you with us, Jackie. Our panelist number seven for today, Junko Kamimura, International Enrollment Specialist, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, NATE, Edmonton, Alberta. Junko has been supporting international student programs within various education institutions for eight years and has recently received the regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant License. As a former international student herself, Junko understands the support necessary to have a successful international student experience. Junko is proud to be part of NATE, one of Canada's largest and leading polytechnic schools, which offers students hands-on and applied learning using the latest technology. Thank you, Junko, for being here today. And last but not the least, my list for today, Anurad Sandhu, CEO at CanAm and ICCRC member. Anurad Sandhu, founder and CEO of CanAm, is an engineer by qualification. After gaining experience in prominent engineering companies for a few years, he co-founded CanAm that has been providing overseas education solutions to students for over 25 years now. A certified member of ICCRC, he was among the first set of licensed Canadian immigration consultants globally. Thank you, panelists. Thank you all for being with us today. And students, please continue to post your questions. Click on the chat button on your screen, type in your WhatsApp number, name, and the city that you're located in. An expert CanAm counselor closest to your location will contact you. And if your question is absolutely unique, We'll pick it up for one of the panelists to answer. Thank you for joining in the conclave. And we now start the conclave. So over to our panelists. Just a second and there we go. Okay, so figuring out what the right career path is like fitting the various parts of a puzzle to get the bigger picture. It is essential not only to succeed, but also for fulfillment when it comes to work and settlement. But how do you choose? How do you zero in on the right career path for you? The workplace has changed dramatically and it's important that you know the skills that are needed. Do you have the luxury of exploring and experimenting with your career? 
The need of the art is to seek specialized and officially regulated guidance on how to navigate through multiple options with capability and confidence. Watch this superb session with our experts who will give insights into the importance of identifying who is just an agent pushing you into decisions which are only commercially viable to themselves and who is a reputable consultant who is genuinely advising you about favorable, favorable options towards your career objectives. And this is just one part of a career consultant's job with a student. As an international student, you would need immigration advice on study permit and future permanent residency options as well. If you're seeking advice on that, the Canadian government passed the Bill C-35 in 2011 that makes it illegal for anyone other than an accredited immigration representative to provide advice. Just a minute. Okay, to provide advice or otherwise represent a client during an application for proceeding with IRCC. An education agent without such a license cannot legally advise you on visa application or about PR options. The Government of Canada continues to deploy efforts to better protect newcomers and applicants to Canada from unscrupulous and fraudulent consultants. The College Act announced recently by their Honorable Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Minister stems from the 2019 Budget Implementation Act, which proposed to improve the oversight of immigration consultants in Canada. My first question is to Ashley Dunlop. Ashley, as a director of student recruitment at the University of Winnipeg, being a certified regulated international student immigration advisor, tell us what should students be aware of when working with an agent? How can students protect themselves? And what should they watch out for? And would you like to make them aware of sub-agents? Yes, thank you so much, Ganga. And I'm really happy to see so many, you know, See, we have more than 500 students and families attending this presentation because I think this is one of the very most important challenges and things that are important to get right in international education. It's very uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, as you mentioned, I, I am involved in admissions and recruitment, but also the Director of International Student Services. And so I have a lot of contact with students after they arrive and hear uh, lots of different stories about their experiences of what happened on their journey to Canada. And not all of them are, are nice experiences or good stories that we hear. Um, and so one of the things um, that is, is very prevalent, and I'm sure some of our other panelists will, will be discussing this as well, is just the explosion of agent culture in India. Um, I know Canam has been around for so long and has such a long established uh, history of helping students in their journey to Canada. And I, I do see as Canada becomes a more popular destination, uh, every time I travel to India, there are more signs on the road saying, study in Canada, authorize agent, go here, visa, don't, no IELTS required, sort of all of these things. Uh, and the change is just so, you can see it just driving down the street, right? And unfortunately, we see that on our end as institutions as well. Um, and so it's really important that students are aware of the situation and um, are working with reputable partners. So um, as I mentioned, um, institutions such as the University of Winnipeg and all of our institutions have approved partners that we work with. Um, and really seek the help of good agents to help students make sure that they are applying to a program that is a great fit for them, that they have got their paperwork in order, that they are a good candidate, that our agents are our partners in helping give students a realistic picture on the fit of the institution and the program. Um, as a university, when we choose a partner, we are, um, you know, we have a, a contract and agreement with an agency. We are looking at references for, for that agency. We are looking um, at our, our history with them every year as we renew. And then also the student experience. You know, when, we, when they come to Canada, we say, how is, how is it going? And um, so choosing partners is really, um, an important task and one that we take really seriously because we don't want students being taken advantage of either. So some of the things that I think uh, families and agents and students can do on their end to protect themselves is one, 
um, making sure that their agent or their sub agent, whoever there is an actual approved partner of that institution. I don't think that there is any um, admissions office that would resent a student sending a quick email that says, hi, I'm working with X, are they an official partner of yours? Because they're telling you. I welcome those emails and I say, this is a student who's doing their research. Many institutions also, we have a whole list of uh, organizations that uh, in each country who are approved partners. So you can often go to the website yourself to check if that agency is listed um, a partner of the university. Um, I think also um, just some red flags that I do see and hear from students. I mean, um, is um, check it, so checking with the institution, making sure that institution knows who your agent is, um, making sure that you have access to your own personal information and application with that student. Um, I know uh, when when we receive a CANAM application. Students are copied on those. So the process is very transparent. Students know what they are, what stage of the application they're in, where it is. I think one co another common pitfall is knowing that there are not shortcuts to uh, application, getting a letter of acceptance, getting a visa, getting a study permit and coming to Canada. And so uh, sometimes the process takes a long time. You know, at CANAM, sometimes it's very straightforward, but an expert agency like CANAM will help you make sure that you're doing everything in the proper way so that things are, are set up. I see sometimes unfortunate situations where students are trying to take shortcuts. So sometimes we request uh, that a document has to go through some additional verification because we want to just make sure that it's legitimate. So. Um, which is very common practice in uh, international education. And so a proper agent like CANAM will go to you and say, you need this extra documentation, you need your school to send a transcript. Often I see sometimes students then jumping ship, going to another agent who is not gonna make them do that. And it's, there are not shortcuts to a proper admission. There's not shortcuts to a, a proper visa application. And so for students, if it seems too good to be true, it is, it is too good to be true. Um, the other things that I um, would just like to say are red flags is agents charging you high fees. Um, part of our, our vetting process is that students are not charged high fees. I've seen uh, sometimes cases where students are working with someone who we don't even know and the student says the agent uh, applied for me for free, but they say I have to pay them, you know, $1,000 for my letter of acceptance. That is a, a letter of acceptance is the student's property. And so just watching high fees, um, withholding your documents. Some I've heard of sto stories of unauthorized agents taking passports and then charging the students to get their passports back making sure you're with someone with really great reputation, with a huge history, and that the university that you want to go to or the college is endorsing is a really important step. And just, um, you know, it's so great to see so many students um, participating in this. So I, had, I could talk all day about this because I feel very passionate about it, but I know we have other panelists with a lot of great expertise as well. So uh, thank you for helping get that message out. I know as an institution, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Ashley. That was really nice. Uh, Adhiraj, my next question to you. Since you were an international student at one time, did you use the services of an agency when you went to study abroad yourself? And now working for a university receiving students, what defines a positive experience with agents for students wanting to achieve their dreams and career goals? Um. Before I start, thank you, Ganga, for having me here again. Uh, I've been following the rest of your sessions as well. It's been, I mean, I think it's been really enlightening and enriching for the students to be attending these sessions. Um, now, to answer your question, yes, I did use the services of an agency both times for my undergrad as well as when I, when I came to Canada for my master's. Um, and the reason I used an agency is because, you know, at that time, uh, I mean, 
I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't want to get a visa rejection. I didn't, I wanted to get the right advice. I also wanted to alleviate uh, some of the hassle of, of applying on your own. Uh, you know, if I, I, I felt that if you use a, like a, uh, if you use an intermediary who can help and who's well reputed, who has the university connections, it would, uh, it would, you know, improve my chances of a visa approval. So this was a long time ago in the early 2000s when I came abroad, but things have changed a lot since then. Now, uh, today, uh, what I think is important in terms of uh, a student getting a good uh, quality of service uh, when, they re when they go out to an agency, one, one, most importantly, I think an agent such as KNM, uh, you know, must have a wide reach. So they must have bandwidth or capacity to be able to assemble a lot of institutional partners together for events for, such as this one, uh, which enlightens students. So... You know, if so that essentially a student has an has a number of different options. They are more aware. You know, they should be aware that they're private about different private institutions, the different public institutions, the different community colleges. So if you can, and and that generally happens when an agent when a agency is able to bring a lot of institutions on board. And for this, for uh, events, for quality events, and for this, they need to have a diverse set of institutional partners in their portfolio. So that there's, you know, that option, there's something uh, in store for every student. Um, the second thing is now in today's uh, world with the pandemic, you know, last couple of years, uh, last uh, year or so, there's been a lot of uh, change. So if you, a lot of agencies, are, a lot of students are, sorry, looking to uh, make the entire process easier and apply from their home. So as you said, mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, Canem has the apply IO portal. So an agency that does differentiate or does offer a serve, an AI enabled service to students in uh, in today's world i think that is that that is important that is a, a strong benchmark and it's a, a good quality setting for a student who's looking to apply abroad and wants to do it from the comfort of their home um, one more thing is prompt service and responsiveness so now, what, this is actually a two-way street. It's not always under the agency's control, but just like Canam, you know, it's a well-established agency and uh, it is on the priority list for many institutions. So for example, when I, as a recruiter, receive an email from any of your staff, you know, I know I, because of the long working relationship that we've had with Canam, I try to get to it first, right? Before I do anything else, I try to answer the email from, Whoever, whichever office of Canem, you know, uh, the admissions uh, member from, from Canem that's sending me the email. So an agency that is, uh, you know, if, if to, to get that prompt service, an agent does need to be considered as a priority partner for an institution. So uh, that, that's important. And Canem does have that reach and the scale that, is, uh, that it is a priority partner for many institutions in Canada. Uh, you also, when you go to a counselor, when you go to an agency, you're also looking for somebody who's knowledgeable, you know, not someone who'll have to continue referring to a brochure each time. So for example, if I'm a student and I say, okay, I'm looking to study a bachelor of computer science and I'm looking to go to Alberta, you know, a counselor, uh, the front the front face, the frontline staff must have this knowledge on their fingertips. You know, okay, these are the four institutions in Alberta that do have a bachelor of computer science. So you know, that increases your confidence in the agency when you go in and somebody is well informed and the, the first interaction that you have, you know, you get, you get the right advice. And most importantly, uh, knowledge of visa processes. So like you mentioned, you know, you had the accreditation, the ICCRC accreditation for um, providing correct uh, visa advice to students. So yeah, essentially, these are the five qualities that I think are important. And just generally, you know, you need to have that connect with the student. So, I mean, I've been to most of Canam's offices across the country and every office, whether big or small, you know, I see that every, from even the branch, there's some of like, I think I went to your South India, one of your South India branches, Chennai or Bangla, I can't remember which one, but the branch manager knows every student that, that is walking into the office by name. So that personal connect, I think is critical. Um, so that if, you know, let's say your counselor is not available for the day, there's somebody else who can help you because everybody knows the student in the office. So, yeah, these are just some of the things that I feel differentiate uh, a good service from a bad service in an agency. Thank you, Diraj, for listing, uh, 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 listing out all these uh, uh, things that students should look at. 
my next question is to Cindy McLeod. Cindy, you've got decades of experience in the international student scenario, and you work with a conglomerate of Canadian institutions. All of your partner institutions find value in working with agents. How do you choose your agents on ground, and do you end up cancelling agreements with any agents if you find them doing something wrong? When should a student see a red flag? Thank you, Ganga. Um, a real pleasure to be with everybody this morning. And, and when you uh, mentioned that I have decades of, of uh, experience, I think I actually was a very early uh, arriver um, in the Canadian market into India. I think my, my first recruitment trip and partnership trip was probably in about 2002. So um, I've seen many, many changes. Um, uh, over the years. and But one of the things that uh, has been consistent is the great work that uh, Can-Am does for, or for Canada, for all of our institutions across the country. And so again, um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. We, um, I represent uh, seven institutions in Canada, but active in um, India's University Canada West. Toronto School of Management and, and, and uh, the Trebis Institute in Montreal that uh, we've recently uh, brought onto our, um, onto our portfolio in Canada. So again, um, with Global University Systems and in, in Global University Systems Canada, we strongly believe in the power of agents. Um, we work very hard to support our agents and really for me that have been working in this field for a long time, and now I'm at the CEO level, I don't get out you know, to recruitment fairs or, or, or those kinds of things very much anymore, but I'm still very, very interested in, in the student's journey to our institutions and, and to, uh, to ensure that they're successful. So some of the things that we look at, look at um, of course, is um, uh, references. Uh, when we're choosing an agency, we do both public and private references, and we ask for those and we actually follow up and check. We actually talk to, to you know, the institutions that, are, that have been listed. I think we look for longevity as well. So again, uh, uh, an agency that has been around for a long time has stability. Like uh, Ganga, um, you know, I think I've, I've probably known you for a very long time. And I think it should give students comfort that if there is an issue that needs to go right to the top, that you or Andraj can text me on WhatsApp, even me, and we answer. I think we heard that from some of the other panelists, that it's that relationship that you have with the institutions and, and the leadership of the institutions as well. I think we, we also look at local reputation again. Um, you know, what are students saying? We do hear you, you have, you know, social media, you, you hear from students if they're having a good experience or, or a bad experience. Another thing that we look at when we choose um, agent partners is the range of institutions that they work with. So, you know, um, what, are the, what are the kinds of institutions that they're representing? And again, Canada is a very small network and all of us, we all connect, we all talk. And if, if an agency um, doesn't have a good reputation or they're not being transparent, we all hear about it. So this is very, very important. Again, um, I think the, the ICCRC certification, of course, is important. The relationship that the agency actually has back to the Canadian High Commission is important. And, and again, um, I think one of the, one of the things uh, as we grow uh, our, student, uh, um, our, our student enrollments from India is, is the follow-up uh, and the care for the students um, through the journey, but also when they actually arrive in Canada. And again, I've, um, I think as Ashley said, uh, you know, students get themselves into trouble by trying to do things themselves. Um, I see so many disappointed students and families that have invested and they can't get the visa or they've been, you know, again, um, maybe 
you know, things have happened to them with their, their, their money or their fees. So, you know, a reputable, transparent agent is one with a long, you know, a long history, I think is very important to being successful to uh, be able to study in Canada. Um, I think that uh, just the, again, that, that follow up and, and looking after students from, from the time they start the process to the time that they get in, get to Canada and then ensuring that things go smoothly from there. Um, and again, just to, to build on what Ashley said, when students start with one agency and then they, they you know, they, they get um, uh, encouraged to move for whatever reason, if it's too, if it looks too good, it is probably too good to be true. And uh, students end up usually in a, in a real struggle um, around, you know, changing agencies. So one of the things I'd like to say to students is be patient, <laughs> work, work with your agent. Um, when Canadian institutions choose an agent, we, we really put a lot of trust in this partnership, in this relationship. And, uh, and I think if, if, if we have uh, a letter, of, if they have a letter of authorization for them that they represent us, we've done our homework and that we trust um, this uh, agent partners to actually represent us in the market. Uh, we do, if we do monitor the activity of, of uh, all of our agent partners, and if something doesn't look right, uh, if we're hearing, you know, feedback from students that, that you know, it doesn't fit with our policies, um, we have often canceled agreements and we all have contracts that we give uh, agent partners and all of us have termination clauses. And if the agents are not um, representing us in, in a transparent manner, um, institutions cancel agreements. And I think that's another thing that, you know, um, students and families, you need to really be aware. Do, do the agents have that, that letter of authorization um, um, from the institution that, that you're planning to go to? And just the, one of the last things is, again, you know, uh, building on what Ashley said, you, when you're in India, you see billboards all over the place and, and you know, advertising, no, no IELTS, no TOEFL, free laptop, whatever. Be very, very cautious because, uh, and, and for us as institutions, sometimes we'll see ads in the paper or whatever on social media that we've not even approved. You know, so we're lucky. We have a very big, a very big team. We have a team on the ground in India, and when we see those kinds of things, we have the ability usually to stop them quite quickly. Um, so, you know, longevity and student support and that relationship back with the Canadian High Commission, and um, and just uh, the the reputation. Talk to families, families, uh, other families, uh, friends that have sent students through Canada. What's their experience been? So again, it's um, um, my pleasure to be here with a group that I have worked with for almost uh, probably 16 years in various capacities and, uh, and uh, have just had a very, very positive experience. Thank you. Duko, you, you could get students applying directly on your portal for admissions. What do you feel are some of the positives of an agency-guided student application over a student who applies directly to NAIT? Hi, Ganga. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Sorry, uh, I have to apologize for these uh, technical issues. I can't use my uh, camera, so I just uh, use my microphone. Um, okay. So. So first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, and it's an honor to be on the panel. So regarding your questions, um, yes, we can see uh, more advantages when a student work with an agent than when a student applies by themselves. So I can give you a full benefits. Um, so the first of all, Agents are familiar with our programs and entrance requirements, so they can suggest a suitable program for a student based on their interest, goal, and the prior learning. 
And also uh, the agents are familiar with our application process and our student portal. So they know what documents will be required to apply for a program, how to prepare the document and upload them to our portal. And they also know how to read application status in the, in the portal, then they can explain to the student because sometimes um, application status can be a little bit confusing to the student. So the, basically the agents are the guide for the student. And then we, um, we have a many intakes a year and then the application process can be a little bit complex. So it's really efficient for the students to work with the agent. And then the third part is um, agents can uh, authorize the submit document. So our school work with a limited number of the agent who passed a very strict screening and completed a long agent application process. And then Kanam is one of our oldest agents. Um, so we provide a lot of training to the agent and then we keep in uh, close communication with them. So our agents have a knowledge and the ability to verify the student transcript and then submit a digital copy to us on behalf of their student. Whereas an independent student, so if the students are not working with the agent, they have to get an authorization on their document from a lawyer or a notary public and mail the original copy to the school and they have to keep tracking the document until we receive them. So by working with the agent, and students can save their time and money for the notarization and the mailing document. And the last benefit uh, is the agent have a direct access to us. So if they have uh, any question, they can reach us by email or phone call, and then we can immediately respond to them. However, if the students are working by themselves, they have to go to uh, our student service center, and it usually takes up takes up like weeks to get the response from them. So it's really uh, beneficial and efficient for the students to work with the agent. Thank you, Junko. Uh, okay. My next question goes to Chris Slate. Uh, Chris, what's the difference in visa approval rates for students that apply directly to your college versus those that work with established agents in India? And how often do you communicate and share important information with your authorized agent? Is this some kind of information which students would miss out on? Direct student, I mean. Thanks, Ganga. And good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. It's also a pleasure to hear from uh, my colleagues at all the other institutions. And I would echo many of the comments that they have made. Um, in, I've been uh, the Dean at Lambton for 12 years. And uh, certainly there was a time where I, I thought direct applications uh, were, were something that we wanted to expand on. And uh, certainly even recently, I've taken a look at the data and direct applicants uh, often worry us because of the high level of fraud that we're seeing in that. And often uh, unauthorized agents are trying to um, apply looking like a direct applicant and we have our staff in India now calling every in direct applicant to ensure that, they're, that they are legitimate and authentic. And recently when I looked at the data, I was quite surprised to see only 40% 40, 40 of our direct applicants receive a visa in India, which is half as much as working with an agent like uh, Can-Am. Uh, the visa approval rates with Can-Am are, are outstanding, in fact as are with some of our other uh, strong authorized uh, agents in India. Um, in terms of, you know, as I was listening, uh, Ganga, to some of uh, my colleagues, you know, it's, I, I don't want to be repetitive. Uh, so I don't want to repeat some of the advice that uh, other colleges or universities have, have provided. But I thought just taking a moment to, to provide the audience, parents and students with a picture of the back end of, admissions, like what's really happening at the back back end. And I think that would help uh, help sort of frame this, this theme for, for the audience. Uh, India, certainly there's a huge demand from India for admission at Canadian institutions. The demand is frankly, uh, sometimes overwhelming at times. 
uh, the number of students applying and so on. And working with an agency like Can-Am, it's really, it's really quite nice because we, we have a limited number of admissions officers. We have a limited number of seats in each program. And some of our mandate is simply not to attract students, but to serve the employers, the industry and the communities that we operate in. And our goal is frankly to find the best and brightest students to serve industry, the companies, the communities, because um, they're in many cases, they're, they're looking for skilled, for skilled talent. So we really want to make sure that our admissions matches their needs. And with the, as, as a college with many of our programs having a co-op, it's particularly important that we find the best, brightest and highest quality applicants. So our admissions team really, really focuses on that. And for parents and students, often what is listed on our program pages as the minimum, the minimum admission requirement, I, I can honestly say very few students, if they meet simply the minimum, will not be admitted. They, so agents like Can-Am, who deal with Lambton quite frequently and send us uh, uh, a large number of applications, understand what is a competitive applicant. They understand not only what the minimum requirements are for each program, but what are the requirements to be competitive in order to gain admission? Because frankly, as I said, when we have a limited number of admissions officers, we're looking for the best and brightest. We focus on the authorized agents. And in fact, we, as many of our colleagues have mentioned, we only have around 90 authorized agents in India. Um, we look for those that understand our what we're really looking for because we have to be efficient with our time as well. And we want to be responsive. Um, and Can-Am providing an application that is not only meeting our minimum requirements, but is uh, very, very competitive. And it's something that our, our employers, our co-op employers, or our community is really striving to, uh, to seek and, and retain is something that is, is really, really helpful for us. And I have to admit, Ganga, uh, I think there was a second part of your question and... Um, I, I can't recall it. Okay, I, I'll just say, how, how often do you communicate and share important information with your authorized agents? And is that a kind of information which should be, uh, which will be missed out by direct applicants? Yes, I think certainly all of us use social media. So Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube are a, a good resource for all students and parents to learn about the institutions. We, we update those uh, daily. But it is certainly in terms of opening and closing programs, um, new programs, uh, our authorized agents receive those messages on a daily basis. And that's really important because um, these choices that that parents, students are, are making are critically important and things change quite quickly. As I mentioned, we have limited seats. Many of our, our programs will be closed for September in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think that's really important. If a, if a student or a parent is interested in going to Lambton or one of the institutions today, you know, you may not know that those programs will be closed in two weeks. So having that information and often our agents are very in tune with uh, what we're looking for and when when things are going to happen, that that's that's I, I don't know if you call it inside inf information, but it, it's certainly critical information for you to make an informed decision. And uh, I, I really um, we really appreciate working with agencies like like Can -Ann. It's you know as an as an admission officer, an admission officer at each institution, what they're looking for is is it a complete application? Is there anything missing? And often, I'm always surprised that uh, in many instances, sometimes documents are, are forgotten to be attached, which delays the, um, the admissions process. And you may not even know that of your authorized agent or the person that you're working with. But I can say uh, confidently that I don't think I've ever seen that with a can application. It's so complete, and we can often make a decision the day that we receive it. And that, that matters when, when each uh, institution is trying to prioritize things. Thanks, Ganga. Thank you, Chris. Uh, my next question is to Jackie. Uh, Jackie, what is the Bill C-35 and what does it mean for Canadian education agents? Some agents say that they're not charging the students to advise on study permits, so it does not apply to them. Is that true?
thank you and uh, for the question and for asking um, IRCC to join uh, this discussion. It's, um, I think like many of you, I have um, been involved in immigration for many, many years. And as I stated, this is my second posting to India. A lot has changed since I was first posted here in 2007. Um, and uh, I'm very excited about C Bill C-35. Um, uh, love India, love the culture, love the food, hate the fraud, hate seeing all those signs, hate hearing people being taken advantage of. Um, and uh, I think you know, it's a, it's a huge mountain and we just have to keep on chipping away at it because it's so important. And um, we work very closely with ICCRC. Um, I have great contacts there. We have meetings with them every two weeks. Uh, together, we're trying to um, do a better job of educating uh, students. There's such a huge student-driven uh, um group in India. And so it is definitely part of our, um, what we want to promote um, is our agent strategy. Uh, I personally like to hear the word consultant because um, I know people use agent and I think it's confusing for clients. Uh, agents, yes, you can have a person that is uh, assisting you as far as which college to go to, which university, which program. Um, that's great. But when it comes to them providing you for information on immigration, you have to make sure that they are an authorized consultant. And I know that authorized consultants use um, people uh, in India. Um, I would argue now that if there's one great thing that we've received um, during this time is that uh, more can be done online. You can connect with an RCIC if they're in Canada um ask those questions if it is a person that is not an rcic but working for an rcic note that they will only be able to do things like um you know take photocopies uh translate documents uh, courier services um things like that if you have a question and you're working with somebody in india that is not an rcic you need to go directly to that RCIC, not the person that is on the ground working for the RCIC. They cannot provide you with that kind of immigration advice. Um, and I would say that um, what's really important is that uh, when they're submitting the application, it is the RCIC name, RCIC number, uh, information, not an agent uh, that is on the application. They're the ones that are uh, you know, have that responsibility to that student. Um, and so I hear a lot too from students that are looking for information about not only the educational institute, but then how to obtain a work permit and a permanent resident after that. And what I would say is our, even our CICs don't have a crystal ball. Um, they can tell you on the programs that are in place right now uh, but immigration programs change all the time. There, I think there's 99 different pathways to permanent residence. So even though um, we can say at this point in time, this, this looks like, you know, you could qualify for a post-grad work permit, you could then apply for permanent residence. Those are really difficult questions. And therefore you have to have an authorized rep. And even at that, things can change. We know that there's um, you know, a significant uh, portion of students in Canada right now. We also know that what are people that apply and obtain permanent resident status through all different categories. Yes, the largest is um, uh, uh, skilled immigration, but there's family class, there's refugees, there's all that. And all together, that's 400,000 maybe applications a year. So you have to be very careful when somebody is promising you permanent residence. No one can promise you that. They can guide you. They can tell you what programs are available at that point in time, but that is it. And so um, I really want to st uh, um, stress to all the students on here that uh, you need to check to see if your rep is authorized. 
right now the the website is a little bit difficult to find where you check. Um, uh, um, I know that there's a number of people here that are 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 RCICs, and they can tell you to check where it is on the website. There's some people that are suspended or under investigation. Check, and I see it all the time, all the time, every single day. People are saying we are authorized through um, ICCRC, and they're not. They take page out in ads. They take, um, they're on the radio. They are so convincing because they are everywhere. So you think, oh, it's not possible that it's all fraud. And it is. So you have to go to that website to check that out, to make sure that the person that you are dealing with, do your due diligence. Like I know that um, I'm hearing the schools and they're saying we're, we're struggling with complete applications and we're struggling with fraud. Yes, that, we struggle with that so much. So, um, and uh, you know, we we average so many fraud emails a day. People asking us, "Is this real?" Check those out. Go directly to your school. Ask those questions. Be an, a good investigator. Be a great student. Be a good investigator when you're asking for those things. So confirm um, RCICs when they are drawing up their agreement. You have to have a retainer. If you don't have that then you shouldn't be doing business with them. That is the only way that they that, that you are accountable. You are expending a lot of money going to Canada, um, a lot of money for your education, a lot of money that a lot of parents, I'm now in that situation where I'm sending my child to school and you, you've saved your entire career for this. Um, and you don't want to squander that on false hopes. It is absolutely devastating. So please make sure to get the correct information and do your research. Um, I think language is a huge barrier. There are lots of RCICs. Um, there's, uh, and I, I do want to mention, it's not just RCICs, but we lawyers couldn't possibly um, handle the volume of of people on immigration. And that's why ICCRC was developed is because there's such a need there. So yes, you can also go to a lawyer. There's also um, uh, other members at the Law Society of the province of Quebec um, that uh, can represent you. But we also, but we know that by far the majority use RCICs. And so um, please just make sure that they, uh, you sign the retainer. There's there's tips on their website uh, because they know that um, there's RCICs like everything else. There's there's great immigration officers, and then there's ones that um, maybe don't make as good of decisions, right? So there's RCICs. There's schools like that. So just make sure that when you're doing your research, even on your ICICs, that um, that they're in good standing, that they do the retainer, that you're confident because that is the only recourse that you have. If things go sideways and you don't receive the, the type of um, uh, representation that you were expecting, you have recourse. You can report them, they can be investigated. If you're using someone that is local, the, your only recourse is to go through um, the local police and put in an FRI. So um, I, I hopefully that answers the questions as far as um, what Bill C-35 is one of the big priorities for our prime minister um, and, uh, and obviously for a minister and that trickles down. Um, we want to make sure that people are provided with the correct information, that they understand what is expected of them when they come to Canada uh, what they can expect from their school or from their employer. And uh, it's important um, because we've been so successful in Canada um, by building our country through immigration and we pride ourselves on it. We pride ourselves in being diverse uh, culture and we want to make sure that we continue that. And we want to make sure that we're getting the, the people that are coming that know what to expect when they arrive. So Hopefully that that's useful. Absolutely, thank you so much, Jackie, uh, and thank you for going into so much details. Uh, my next question is to Dylan. Uh, Dylan, what are the usual mistakes made by Indian students when they are applying for a student visa that would attract a refusal? Thank you for this question. It's a great question. 
Uh, I would say some students, specifically in student applications, make the mistake of not telling their story. Uh, every student has a story of where they're coming from, what they've studied, and what they're looking to study in Canada. It might not be clear to the officer looking at your application where you're coming from and where you're going. Many students include a letter of intent explaining why they chose Canada, why they chose their school, and why they chose their program. Uh, one of the things an officer needs to judge is that your studies are a logical step for your education or career, and a letter of motivation can help you with that decision. We don't require it, but it is something that can help the officer make sense of something that might not make sense the way they see it on your application. I would recommend this, particularly for students who are not going through an average career path. Maybe they waited a couple of years before studying, or they studied one thing in India and they're studying a different thing in Canada. It's always best to explain where you're coming from to immigration. Uh, but on top of that, I'd say the most important thing for a student is to be honest and upfront in your application. If you're unsure whether specific things apply to your application, like your education history or your work history or your immigration history, it's better to mention it on the application than not to mention it. Students who are found to have included incorrect or false information could be inadmissible to Canada for five years because of a small mistake that they didn't realize they made. Uh, they may have thought, oh, immigration does not care that I was refused from Germany or immigration does not care that I got a degree here but it's always best to list it and the officer can decide whether it's important or not afterwards. Uh, and this comes back to making sure that if you choose to have an agent uh, or consultant that you do your research so you don't end up with an unscrupulous consultant. We get tons of students who we refuse for misrepresenting information on their application and they respond saying, my agent wrote that down, my agent didn't tell me that. Uh, and it's the unscrupulous agents who aren't being helpful to their applicants that get away with this and it's the students that end up being inadmissible to Canada for five years. Uh, so be honest and make sure you know what's on your application when you sign off on it, because the signature at the bottom isn't that your agent knows what's in your application, it's that you know what's in your application. So if you sign that, you should know what's in your application. And a qualified consultant, one who's there to help you and not just to take your money, will make sure that you know what you're getting into and that you know what you're saying on your application. So to make that simple, the most important things, tell your story and be honest and uh, your chances of being improved will go up much higher. Thank you. Thank you, Dhanan. That was good insight. Uh, now, the last question to Anuraj. Uh, Anuraj, you're an ICCRC member and CEO of CANAM. Uh, CANAM was known as a, has been already been known as a trusted Canadian immigration brand and then in I mean, and, and then in came, uh, sorry, and then came in positive Canadian government policies, infusing the postgraduate work permit and the Canadian experience class aimed at attracting inter international students. At around the same time, the Entrepreneur Renew launched the Canadian universities and colleges admissions workshop series, which set a very high standard in recruitment efforts. Tell us about your experience at CANAM as a licensed RCIC to be able to advise students about both the study and the possible uh, permanent residency options? Uh, thank you, Ganga. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity actually to do a little bit of educational or information kind of a conversation with the uh, students and the parents who probably are part of the audience right now. And uh, one of the things when I was listening to various panelists, I thought there's something which is very important to bring out is that I think people need to know what an regulated or an authorized immigration consultant means, which is very important because many believe, that's many students believe, or they're probably made to believe that uh, if a person is a member of this body called ICCRC, many consultants will tell students that, hey, this person is probably a member of some association in Canada for which you pay an annual fee and you really don't get any value out of it. And that's about it. And that's the kind of imaging which is created by localized consultants that we're just a member of some association, which you pay annual fee for. And then there's another kind of consultants who will say that because I am authorized agent of a college, I automatically become a licensed consultant to help you with a visa. So many students are not aware of that, that that is not true. It's absolutely not true. Just simply by representing a college, you are not authorized as per the Canadian government laws to actually help a student with a student visas and an immigration process. And to drive home the point of what a 
license consultant means and what we have to go through i'm going to take a little extreme kind of an example uh, like in india we have the doctors they are licensed by the medical council of india to be a doctor you probably go through you have to go through a specific study program and then you go through an internship and you pass those exams and finally become a doctor similarly to become an immigration consultant a licensed immigration consultant there's a specific program that you have to study currently the program is delivered by queens university law faculty that's the only option which is available for people who speak in english and after that there is an entry to practice examination which you have to go through licensing exam and only when you pass that exam are you a licensed consultant and and the situation would be let's assume if your if your doctor was not licensed that would be absolutely hazardous for your health right similarly when your consultant is not licensed he could be injurious to your ambitions he can kill your ambitions he can actually be threatening for your career outcomes and your life goals so it's a very serious decision when you're trying to choose a consultant because the effect is not about buying a small product it's something which is going to affect your whole life your whole career and and i would like to get into a little bit of a background on how the government of canada actually decided to go about licensing this activity till about 18 years back it never existed but there were so many immigration consultants in practice for the last so many decades but there was a need and that need came out because canada is an extremely attractive country to be in it has a fantastic quality of life in terms of uh, political stability great economy this ethnic diversity healthcare education it attracts a lot of people it's a very attractive country in terms of uh, the fact that very various rankings has put canada as one of the best countries to live in the world along with that they have a very very positive immigration policy which is dynamic which is inclusive which is balanced and which is oriented towards migrant migrant integration in fact there's a index which is called mipex which is m i p e x which is a migrant in uh, immig- integration policy index which is ranked canada number 4 in the world in terms of uh, its attractiveness the policy's attractiveness to attract people to migrate to canada and number 4 in the world but in the amongst the english speaking countries it is number 1 canada ranks number 1 position which in the past has been held by usa and even by australia because it is such an attractive country for immigration and for people to move in it brings in a lot of applications and and this has been going on for decades now and because it brings in a lot of applications it creates a business opportunity it creates a business opportunity for immigration consultants to exist and many years back i mean i remember in the 80s and 90s there were tens of thousands of immigration consultants all over the world many were good some were bad and to control that to control that the government decided that they need to do something because a lot of unacceptable practices came into play a lot of fraud a lot of misrepresentation came in so in 2002 the government set up an advisory i mean on the recommendation of the minister of immigration and citizenship an advisory was created that look into what can the government of canada do to control and regulate the immigration consultants so that's how uh, the advisory committee recommended the creation of a body called csic Canadian Society of Immigration Consultants that was created in 2003 then later on in 2011 the bill C35 came that was a game changer which said that if your consultant is not licensed then that consultant is illegal i mean they can be penal action on him through a fine or even a even a jail term could come in so those are the situations which basically came about and after uh, then CSIC uh, finally converted to ICCRC which is soon going to become that is a uh, cicc that is college of uh, college for immigration and uh, citizenship consultants and in every stage is gathering more teeth more power to regulate and discipline its creed of people but it's not simply about regulation alone like when i say when i say crc remember it's not simply that i'm supervised i'm also trained for various models and features like i have to go through various training programs that is continuous continuing professional development programs professional management education that gives us as an opportunity an edge to understand the immigration policy better and to deliver in a better way and uh, when it comes to education a large number of students from india of course are really impressed by the quality of education that uh, canada has to offer fantastic infrastructure that the institutes 
like universities and colleges in Canada offer. But along with that, there is a strong influence by the immigration policies. People are looking at permanent residence, that amazing work permits, that economic classes like federal skill category, and now the Canadian experience class, which is a very popular means for students in uh, Canada to gain migration if they follow the system, right? And so because of that, our role as an organization, CANAM, is, which was primarily immigration in the past, and when education came into its fold, we are able to provide a very comprehensive platform in which we are not just an education agent selling programs. We don't believe in that. We like to combine it with the career aspirations of a student as to what he really wants to do, and we are able to club it together and create an opportunity for a student that he can proceed further in which we Education is only a medium. At the end of the day, he's looking for a career, he's looking for job opportunities, and all of that needs an advice of an immigration expert. And as per Canadian government laws, that immigration expert better be licensed. And that's the platform that we're able to provide to students. Thank you. So in conclusion, it is really up to you as a student to get the right kind of guidance from a reputed and licensed consultant so that your profile, your objective to study in Canada, your career plan, the study program you choose, and the region in Canada your college is located in will all align themselves and work towards giving you the ultimate edge. So don't take chances with your career goals. And a zillion thanks to our expert panelists for their huge contribution of time and effort in making this conclave a fantastic success. Thank you responses from the students in the chat box shows massive appreciation for you all. And we at CANAM do look forward to helping you students connect with our university and college partners, get you a global career perspective and your success will always give us great pleasure. Team CANAM looks forward to serving you. Thank you all for attending our eight sessions and best wishes to you all. And again, one more zillion thanks to all our panelists for being so helpful and contributed so much to all our panels. Thank you. Thanks so much for giving us so this much. opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's really great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Best of luck to all of our audience as they as they continue in their journey to, uh, to make uh, educated, educated, informed decisions. And thanks again to Ken Am for hosting this. It was very informative uh, for us at Lambton as well. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all my fellow panelists as well. Uh, it's been a great interaction. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having us, Ganga. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Hope to see you. Hope to see you in India soon. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Look forward yeah. to meeting you, Cindy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Cindy. And we hope to see you soon too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Thank you. It was a really good job. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye then. Bye. Bye-bye.